Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I am Julian Osman. I am a software engineer at uh, CS Group, and I am part of the development team of the Orpho Toolbox. And today I will present uh, what uh, was new in uh, the two last release of the Toolbox, uh, the version 7 and the version 8 that came the la th last uh, three years. Uh, first, I want to, uh, to do a short reminder of uh, what uh, the Orpho Toolbox is. So it started more than 15 years ago as a C++ library. So it was used to build uh, softwares. Uh, it specialized in uh, remote sensing image processing. And uh, it has uh, the inside toolkit as a main uh, dependency. The Inside tool Toolkit is a library, library for uh, medical image processing that provides capabilities for streaming and pipeline. So it's a free and open source software. Uh, it was founded by the CNES. And uh, we, uh, with the time, we build some other tools with the toolbox so people can use it more easily. Uh, so this includes some ready-to-use applications that you can call through the command line interface or graphical interfaces. You can also call them through a Python API. And uh, now you can also call them from uh, QGIS uh, interfaces. Uh, the toolbox is also uh, provided with um, a tool to, uh, for, for image visualization called Monteverdi. So we released the Orpho Toolbox 7 in 2019, and uh, it was followed with uh, the version 7.1.2 and uh, so on. And we implemented some great uh, new applications. So the first one is a, a re regression framework. I don't know if you are familiar with the um, classification framework that was already present in the toolbox, but it works the same. So you will find the train uh, image regression and the image regression applications. The first one will train a model and then you can apply that model to do regression in your, uh, on your uh, other images. Uh, we noticed that we had a lot of uh, code in the toolbox that was dedicated to uh, hyperspectral sensors, but we didn't have any application using it. So people could use that code, but it was not easy for people who don't uh, use C++. So we are now providing new applications that uh, access to that code and that are, are dedicated to hyperspectral uh, sensors. We also pr propose two new image processing applications. The first one is fast NL mean, that's um, for smoothing the images, and the Pantex texture extraction, that's for uh, texture extractions, obviously. We also have some new utilities the zonal statistics, when you have uh, uh, the output of the classification and you want to have some statistics about uh, the different classes, you can use that application. Also, the reset margin is an application that looks like the extract error application to extract a zone of interest from your image. But instead of cropping the image, it will, uh, the, the output image will be the same size as the input image with the region of uh, interest that stay the same, and everything around will be set to zero, or uh, whatever value you want. And the synthetized uh, application will take a list of image as input, and uh, the output pixel will take the value of the first pixel in the series that's not zero. It's useful when you want to um, concatenate some masks, for example. Okay, uh, we also improved the support for the SAR sensors. We have two new sensor models that are present in the toolbox for Cosmos SkyMed and TerraSarX. And also we have some new um, remote models specialized for Sentinel-1. Uh, 
uh, which are S1 tiling and Diapo TB. I will present them in another presentation. Also, we have a new extended file name. So extended file name are uh, small keywords that you can add at the end of the name of the file that you put as input or in output, and that will add uh, some context to uh, your processing. So the no data extended file name uh, is useful if you want to set the value of the no data to your output image. And for people here who want to develop using the toolbox, we have some new uh, functionalities too. The first one is the um, functor image filter that I will present after. Also, we uh, introduced the support for GDAL3. We uh, removed the support for Python 2 and switched to Python 3. Uh, with uh, OTB6, the logs of the application were not um, transmitted to the Python API, so we fixed it uh, with uh, uh, OTB7. Uh, we dropped the support for the Java uh, wrapper. Uh, nobody was using it anyway, and um, nobody complained about the removal, so it's fine. And also, we uh, now have a new uh, integration platform uh, for the toolbox that I will present now. So it's based on the GitLab software that uh, we hold the code and the issues and the merge requests. So it's our main uh, tool uh, to work on the development of the OTB. And every time someone push some new code, it will uh, trigger some um, pipelines that will uh, generate the, um, the binaries, uh, run the test, um, send the report to the sonar cube for uh, the code quality, or to the CDH for the result of the unit test. And um, all the binaries are then deployed to the, um, to the website. So as I said, we introduced the functor image filter. We noticed that a lot of filters are just uh, doing a mathematical operation pixel-wise. And I don't know if you already wrote a filter for the offer toolbox, but it's very talkative. You need to write a lot of code just to do like a mathematical operation. It's not worth it. So the functor image filter will help you to do your uh, mathematical operation pixel-wise or with a neighborhood for convolution, for example, uh, and uh, just write a lambda function or even a function, a C++ function, and you can provide that lambda function to the, the function, uh, the class uh, new functor filter. It will generate uh, an object that acts like uh, an OTB filter. So it can, it has functions for set the input, to get the output and to run the process doing update. Exactly like a, a classical uh, filter. So it makes the work really easy to uh, create new uh, filters. There is a template uh, in, on the GitLab. If you want to see how it works, uh, it, uh, it, it's all explained. Well, uh, in parallel of the version 7 development, we also worked on the version 8. The main purpose of that version was to remove uh, one of the main dependencies of the OTB, which is OSIM. OSIM is a geographical uh, library, and uh, we used it in the OTB for uh, reading and writing the metadata in the images, also to handle the elevation and uh, all the sensor models. It was also in charge of uh, the time and duration uh, manipulation. Well, we wanted to remove it because it was making uh, everything really hard for us to package correctly the Orpho toolbox. Uh, we had uh, some uh, package that were provided to the community, but it was hard, for example, to generate a Conda package because we had some uh, conflict in the dependencies. Also, uh, some people are packaging the Orpho toolbox on, uh, the de on, for Debian, 
And they didn't want it to package uh, OSIM anymore. So they would stop to package your photo box if we kept that uh, dependency. So both for uh, Debian and for the Python uh, uh, community, it was better to remove OSIM. Also, uh, every time we wanted to update the, the dependency so to, to take a, a newer version of OSIM, we had some uh, problem with um, the, some part of the code that we are not compiling anymore or uh, differences in the results. So it took a long time to um, assess that the new results were better. And also we noticed that uh, we used, uh, I think, about 40% of the capabilities of OSIM, and most of them were already provided by GDAL. So the idea was to stop using OSIM, and everything that, was able to, uh, that GDAL was able to do, we would, we would do it through GDAL. And anything else, we, we would implement it inside the Oracle toolbox. Uh, so that took uh, a lot of work to do because um, the dependency was very tentacular. I mean, it was everywhere in the in the code. But uh, we managed to release uh, the version eight of OTB this year. It also uh, contains some improvement with the QGIS uh, plugin that I will present after. And last but not least, we also have now um, an official um, Docker image that you can find on Docker Hub. So you don't have to install all the OTB on your computer anymore if you want to use the Docker, comp uh, the, the Docker uh, container. Well, I was th talking about the QGIS um, uh, interfaces and uh, how it was uh, improved. Here on the left, you have the Orpheo Toolbox version 7, and on the right, the version 8. As you can see, some application uh, would ask uh, which uh, band you want to use in the process, and before you had to write the name of the band. So first, you, know, you need to know the name of the band, and then you need to write it correctly, even with the um, capitals. So it was prone to mistakes. And uh, with that new version, you will have uh, uh, the list of the bands presented to you. Uh, and uh, you can uh, choose the bands you want to process with a checkbox. It's the same with uh, vector data. When, to, when you want to choose the feature, for example, for uh, classification, uh, uh, during the training uh, process, you need to tell the application which is the right uh, mm. uh, feature to use as um, uh, ground truth. Well, you had to, name, to write the name of the feature. So now you can just uh, select it in the list. And it's the same with the application radiometric uh, in the, uh, indices. Uh, that application uh, can generate uh, some indices. You can just choose what indice you want to generate. Well, you had to write the whole name of the indice, and as I can see, they are quite long to write. So now you can just select the one you want. Uh, last year, we had uh, the opportunity to hold the OTB User Days, uh, which is a small conference for uh, people using the Orpheo Toolbox. You will find uh, on the blog all the um, presentation, if you want. They are in English, but uh, on YouTube, you can also find uh, the um, record of the presentations that are in French. It was a good opportunity to talk about uh, how people use the, the toolbox and what they are expecting from it. And we uh, were able to gather and uh, talk about what we will do next. Because uh, Orpheo Toolbox is still a, a living project and we are still uh, implementing some new features. Uh, the version 8.1 is coming next month. The release candidate is already dis uh, available if you want to try it. Um, we, uh, we have a roadmap for the version 9. And it, the goal is to prepare um, uh, the Orpheo Toolbox to be more um, easy to use with the Python universe. So 
we will first remove the graphical interfaces because, as I said, the QGIS interfaces are already, already very good and we don't see the point of uh, maintaining more uh, interfaces. But that means we also remove the, um, the vis image visualization, visualization uh, Monteverdi. It will not be uh, included in the future versions of the Orpheo toolbox. We will also drop support for the MacOS uh, operating system because uh, the new generation of um, Macintosh are based on uh, IRM uh, processors that are not uh, supported by, by the Orpheo toolbox. So we, we, can't, uh, we, we don't have the power force to, to support that kind of uh, ships. So we are dropping the support for MacOS. But uh, with the, um, the Docker image, you are still able to use Orpheo Toolbox on MacOS. Uh, some people asked about, asked about it on the forum, and we had some good return and feedbacks about the, um, the, the, the Docker and the use of Docker uh, on MacOS. And the last uh, thing that we are working on for um, the version 9 is to update the dependency to ITK. Uh, to the version 5 that will uh, improve the, um, the performances. But it's a big uh, change in the API, so people who are developing using OTB will have some work to adapt. And what happened next? Well, I already said that we want to make OTB more compatible with the Python. So we will uh, continue the integration. Our goal uh, is to be able to do pipe install OTB. We are not here yet, but we are working toward, toward it. And uh, the removal of OSIM and uh, the, the, of the, G, the, the Qt um, dependency uh, are um, part of that uh, work. Also, uh, we try to uh, reach new uh, contributors for the toolbox. Uh, we know it's hard sometimes to work with C++, and uh, we are here uh, to help and um, to welcome new uh, contributions. So um, thank you for your attention, and uh, if you have uh, any questions, I'm here. <laughs>